I'm Peter Reinhardt, and I've been searching for the perfect pizza my entire life. It's a quest that has taken me all over the world. It's become about so much more than pizza. I've gotten to know some of the world's greatest pizzaiolos, and met artisans who make cheese, bake bread, and even grow the best tomatoes. The one thing that unites them all? Their passion for perfection. What's burning in their belly? Though that's really what all of this is about. We never know where the quest will take us, but we'll follow that trail wherever it leads. Welcome to Pizza Quest. There really is no bigger name in the American pizza world than Tony Gemignani, whose pizza kingdom is based in San Francisco, California. His love for pizza drove him to compete in the World Acrobatic Dough Tossing Championships in Italy, where he was pretty much unbeatable. So later he decided to move to an even more difficult category and eventually won the World Championship for Best Margarita Pizza in the World in Naples, beating the Neapolitans at the Roman Games. He was a marked man over there. I mean, he had to almost sneak out at night. Don't forget, we're talking about Naples, right? So, so this is this is the, the oven you brought over from from Naples, right? Yeah, this is a Chiliano oven from Naples, from the Campania region. Feel the heat? A lot of heat, man. So, like, yeah. like I think it said on your menu, like 900 yeah, degrees. Yeah, we run it at 900 degrees. The dome is definitely about 1,000 degrees. So you you only make your Neapolitan, your true Napolitana yeah. pizzas in here. About how long does it take a pizza to bake in here? About 90 seconds. 90 right? seconds? Yeah. 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 We got a few other ovens in the back. Do you want to go Should see we, that? Yeah, let's go look at the other ovens. Let me yeah. go show you. So like this is the back kitchen, your mixer, and then what do we have? Three different ovens. Back yeah, there. we have a cupone oven. This is from Northern Italy. Um, this is kind of a different oven. We do our Sicilian styles out of here. When you go to the World Championships in Italy, you're going to compete on a cupone. In this oven. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So usually on um, this oven, you can control the top and bottom element, and that's pretty important when you do a Sicilian style. When you see something in a square pan, so you can actually control that heat to make it triple heat on the bottom to cook the bottom, I or see. you can actually turn it off the bottom but it's, and cook the top. But it, like this would become eventually a Sicilian pizza. This huh? one, yeah, like pizza in teia. Pizza in teia means pizza in the pan. Okay. So we have uh, two ovens here. These are built in New York. They're Marsal ovens. Marsals, huh? The one on top, we have dome. It's called a dome brick oven. So we have bricks on top, bricks in the back, and bricks on the bottom. Okay. So you're going to get a pretty well-rounded pizza on this. And what, what kind of pizzas we do We cook our in classic place? Italians in here. Cla All right. We crank this up to 600 degrees. So um, in Italy, um, you see a lot of gas brick ovens, so I, I decided to do my uh, classic Italians out of so here. So when you say classic Italian, that's kind of like the pizza we grew up with, right? Like what you might find You think of prosciutto arugula, uh, four, uh, you know, the four season pizza. Oh, you think okay. of like oh, the, oh, those, those types of pizzas. pizzas. Okay. Not, the, uh, not, the, not the pizzas that the neighborhood pizzeria in, in Philadelphia or New no, Jersey. No, that's what we would do actually down here. That, okay, yeah. so this is your classic this is your American classic style American pizza. American style okay. oven. Bricks on the bottom, no bricks on top. These are the doughs that you see the guys spinning them and all that yeah. stuff. And and you bake them right on the deck or do you right put them on in the a pan? Deck. So, so yeah. you're matching the flour to the style of pizza to the oven. Yeah. And essentially it's, it's like... It's pretty difficult because at night I got five, six different recipes for dough. Are you a righty or left? I'm righty. Okay, so right hand. Or right palm like that. Bring it in. So wash my hand without it. Bring it in like this. And we're gonna push it up like this. Perfect. First step. Two, three. Whoop. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna be there already to catch it. It'll already be there to catch it with your fist. Perfect. Gotcha. You get really good, you just start spinning your hand. Oh yeah, I can do that, yeah. You do across the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Toss wide, catch wide. Toss wide, catch, catch wide. wide. Also, when you toss a pizza, you don't catch it like that. You want to be the cool pizza tosser and like just have it come back to your hand. <laughs> so you don't look like you're nervous, that's it's like the, you're scared. That's it should always come to your hands no matter what. Because if the dough knows you're scared, it's going to take advantage of you. It will, and you yeah. don't want the dough All to right. get injured. All right. Now, this dough you're using now, which dough is this? Uh, this is actually the caputo. This is in a real wet dough. dough. Yeah, no, it's, it's soft, but it's not wet. It's pretty yeah. easy um, okay. to move. I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my crust around the edges. Okay. Now I'm going to push it. And usually you, you push it out to about a 10 inch. Usually what I want it to be is I want it to be a 12 inch, but 
what you do is you fix it on your peel. So the challenge now, you is put, you're making this right on the, you're making the whole pizza and then you're transferring it. Exactly. So when we're making this, we're going to go in a spiral motion. Yeah, look how pretty that sauce is. It's, that sauce is like really loose and wet. It's not like a thick pasty sauce. Now what I do is I grab a four ounce ovalini. And what I do is sometimes they'll chop it on the marble. Sometimes it'll already be chopped or cubed. I actually pinch it off. And so I know that every time you get a pizza here, it's always going to be four, four ounces. ounces of, of it's not cheese. going to be a different weight. And this is weight. Fior de Latte. This is the cow's milk mozzarella. Yeah. So we have this. We're going to sea salt this, and we're going to go in a spiral motion like that. Okay. Now we have our basil. Now when it comes to basil, we tend to take off the take stems. Take the stem. Okay. But you're putting the basil on before you bake it, not after. Exactly. And, it, and that's traditional, um, or does it matter? It is very traditional, because when you're in a high heat oven like this, your basil not, is not going to shrivel up to nothing. And you put a fair amount of basil on there. Go we'll spiral motion with the uh, olive oil. So okay. what I'll do is if you can hold it up here. Hold it here. All right. Now this is the traditional slide in Naples. So what Whoop. you would do is you would hold it for me, and then I would go ahead and shape it, and then I would slide it. So you're going to pull it a little so bit So in more. Naples, they're always going to slide it from the marble onto their peel. Onto the That's peel. traditional. We said 90 sure. seconds, so we're, so we're about 15 seconds in. Already we can see it's starting to puff up. You're going to see a pretty good char already. Already, yeah. It's much hotter than where, uh, that part of the, the bake. So you have to turn it in order to exactly. even so it out. Closest to, the, uh, closest to the wood is going to be your hottest area. So this side right here is going to be charring pretty quick. I have about 25 seconds left. You also have one pizza in there. Now, how many can you bake when you're in full tilt? I can do three. You can squeeze three in there? Wow. So you see this pie? Yeah. That's pretty good. Beautiful. Now the bottom's good. Yeah. My bottom's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dome this real quick. And that dome is very, very hot. It's Probably. like 1,000 degrees. So you're getting a real blast of heat up there, baking straight down. That so, was it, just a few seconds above. Not too bad, huh? And that's it. Less than 90, about 90 seconds, maybe less even. And, the, and even the basil's still green. A little bit of char on it. Got beautiful caramelization of the crust there. And there's no sugar, no oil on this, so you can tell without that, the pizza charred pretty well. Even without sugar, it still caramelizes because caramelization refers to sugar. So the sugar must be in the flour, naturally. It's the natural sugar in the flour that's caramelizing. So we're going to slide it on here, and uh, that's about And this is how it would be served on, on exactly. like this? Exactly. Our margarita, when you get the award-winning margarita, it's always served on these. These are made um, in Italy for, for our margarita. Only for the margaritas. Just for the margaritas. But, but this would be fairly much like the pizza that Queen Margarita got. It's very Napolitano, yeah. So Beautiful. Uh, you want to try it? Uh, yeah. So see how the basil had a nice little char, but yeah. it didn't, it didn't uh, get It didn't shrivel or anything. Or anything. Yeah. Yeah, no. And now also, because this is the Napolitana, it doesn't, the slices aren't designed to stand straight out. No. But I could fold this like this. Um, mm. Um, mm, 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 mm. Again, really light tasting. The dough is slight sweet. Tastes like there's sugar in the dough. It's, it's so sweet, but there isn't. None added. It's just the natural sweetness and sugars that's in the flour. The sauce is like, it's so bright. I mean, there's not just in color, but bright in flavor. I mean, it really just tastes that, pops that, off that the tomato off the flavor. That's what it's really all about, is that simplicity of pizza, uh, going back to its roots, going back to what you know pizza mm. really was in its heyday. And uh, I think that's what you're going to taste right there. So the Italians pride themselves on their world-renowned cuisine, not just because they're good cooks, which they are, but because they're passionately connected to their traditions, to the land, to the farmers, to the produce, to the quality of locally grown ingredients, which deliver amazing flavor. Tony epitomizes that same sense of passion and connectedness in finding the best quality ingredients. And so he took us out to the tomato fields in Northern California to meet Steve Rouse of Stanislaus Tomato Products in the fields where the tomatoes are actually grown. The kind of tomatoes you have at home are what's called indeterminate variety, which means that the tomatoes will ripen over a season and maybe an entire summer long. Every week you go out and pick some nice fresh ones. Mm -hmm. We need these to all be ready to harvest at the same time because we're gonna grab the entire bush, take it into the harvester, and the harvester will actually shake them off. Like we'll actually me. shake the tomatoes off. Them in, if you yeah. look under obsessive compulsive tomato yeah. in the dictionary, it has our picture. <laughs> well, yeah. for somebody who's, who's tasting tomato first, what should we be looking if, for? If you're, if you're tasting a, uh, a tomato, you should have a burst of clean, fresh flavor. You should be able to sense almost a kind of a viney aroma to it. 
should be very pleasing to the palate. You absolutely have to have a balance between sugar and acid. It's just like in a fine wine. If you have a wine that's um, too sweet, not tart enough, it's cloying. It, it has no character. On the other hand, if you have a wine that is on the tart side, not enough sweetness, then it's just sour. You know, it's, it's your vinegar. But in the right balance, the ideal sugar-acid ratio, then you have the ideal flavor profile. So you have sweet and tart together. Uh -huh. That's interesting. So we got obsessive tomato grower, obsessive pizza maker. So when you open a can, what are you looking for? What's happening inside of your head? Well, it depends on the, the pizza I'm making because you have so many different routes. So am I looking for that more classic New York route? And that's something that's, you know, come up again and again in our conversation is this notion of respect, respect the craft, respect the craftsman. So, so respect seems like it's a, it's a theme. It's a driving theme for you. I think you lose that. Maybe? Yeah, I think you lose that. I think that, you know, I always respect my parents, my grandpa. Uh, he was a farmer. You know, some people may not look at farmers as being much respectful mm -hmm. to them. I thought he was the hardest working man I ever knew. Um, so I think that respect that is kind of, you lose that, I think you're kind of seeing that a little bit lost in the, in the world. I think uh, yeah. it's important to remember that respect. Do you feel like your grandpa would be really proud of you right now? Yeah, oh yeah, he would totally yeah. be proud of me. And that's important, I think. Yeah, right? it's very yeah. important to me. Like Mozart, who could play any kind of music, he was just the best, whatever Mozart did, he was the best at him, and that's how Tony is. And, I mean, who, who has a pizzeria with five or seven different kinds of ovens? That, speaks to his degree of passion and drive to try to do things as well as they can be done at the highest possible level. Standing here looking over his city, as much as I love Tony, I can't help but wonder now that I found the Mozart of pizza, where will I find the other virtuosos of this craft?